So today we're going to talk about how to form a corporation on your own, not having to pay anybody to help you. Now, I don't recommend this necessarily. It's a cheaper option uh, because an attorney or someone qualified can help you go over tax consequences, whether a corporation is the best fit for you, whether an LLC is better, uh, additional documents you might need, but these are the basics to get you started. So first, you want to go to the Secretary of State website, and you can actually do this online. Let me show you the California. So here we have the California Secretary of State. You go to sos.ca.gov, and they make it pretty easy. You click to their business tab. And number one of the topics is forming your corporation, file it online. Click on that um, and you can go through the process. You basically enter in your uh, name, the name of the corporation, your agent for service of process. And that means if the corporation gets sued, the state of California needs to have a location where people can serve a lawsuit on someone. And that can be an individual within the state or it can be certain entities that act as a registered agent for you as a service. Usually they'll charge you 50 to $150 a year to do that for you. If you live in the state, you can use uh, an individual's address, but remember that this is all gonna be public information. So whatever you put in on here, people are going to be able to search your business and see the registered agent's name and address. So if you use your personal address, just realize that that's going to show up online. So you go through and you can see that there's a $100 filing fee that the state of California charges. And basically you can go through here, you type in the corporation name and whatever the name is. And you go through, um, if you reserved a name, which you can do uh, through the Secretary of State, then you would click this box, but otherwise you just go next. So here it's gonna ask you basically the address for the corporation. And uh, then it's gonna go on to the registered agent, whether it's an individual or a registered agent, which you have to pick from basically a list of approved uh, registered agents. So Cogency Global is a large one that I use. Um, so that's one, and I think they charge about $80 to $100 per year to act as your agent. And basically you say, okay, how many shares of stock are you going to issue? So you put in whatever the number of shares is that you want to use. Um, general rule, 10,000, 100,000 gives you plenty of room. Some people only want to issue maybe 500 or 1,000. So whoever the owners of the corporation are, are going to get those shares of stock. So if there's only one owner and there ever only will be one owner, you could put 100 and issue all 100 shares to that person or 50 shares to one person, 50 shares to another person. And that would result in 50% ownership and 50% ownership. But all you have to do on here is basically tell it how many shares of stock total the corporation could issue at any time in the future. And usually current filing date of when you're filing to start the corporation is what most people do. Um, and then basically it'll ask you to review, which I didn't fill in most of it, but review what you have on here and make sure that it's all correct. Electronically sign it, pay the $100. And it takes a little bit of time for the Secretary of State to review it to make sure everything's filled out properly uh, one area that is concern is the name. You have to make sure that the name is available. So if you use a corporate name and you put in Facebook Incorporation, Incorporated or General Motors or something that's already a corporation, then it's going to reject it and say that name is already taken. So you want to search to make sure the name is available. Um, usually the more obscure it is, the more likely it is to be available but you can actually go to the Secretary of State up here, click on the business tabs and do business search number eight over here. Business search with three images. 
click on corporation and type in here whatever name it is you want to search for and it will search to see see there's already a ton of corporations with the name for example facebook in it so you can't use any version of this or they will reject it so you have to come up with something completely separate um, this is also something that you want to think about when you're forming corporation that okay am i going to brand my business under a certain corporate name so the corporation you want to name probably a similar name so you want to think about do you want to try to get a trademark to protect the name itself from other companies using it so in some cases you'll need to do a trademark search to make sure the name is available and one thing people don't realize is forming a corporation or an llc a business entity is a state by state process so here i'm showing you california how to form a corporation that doesn't mean that you've locked up that corporate name and corporation in any state you want there could be another corporation with that same name in Nevada or Texas or Arizona. So it only set, guarantees you use in the state of California. If you want to form a corporation in California, but also do business in Arizona or Nevada, you have to register that corporation as a foreign corporation in that other state, which is another process, another fee. So for example, Delaware, you can go to form a corporation in Delaware, onestop.delaware.gov. And they have a pretty easy process. You can basically start a business right for, from their website, um, set up the legal structure, and basically go through and click through and say you want to set up a corporation. Here's the name. Here's the registered agent. And uh, here are, is the address for the corporation pay the fee and it's done. So it'll take a few weeks or a few days to get confirmation back that it is filed properly. That's just the first step. That's just filing the articles of incorporation. And that's the first step to make it a legally recognized entity in that state. So the minute that you file it, technically you should be provided with liability protection so that if your business gets sued, by an employee, by another, by any kind of creditor, a vendor, whatever it is, uh, someone slips and falls on your business premises, they want to sue somebody, they would sue the corporation and the date that you file, you should be provided with liability protection so that if they sue the company, they can only go after the assets owned by the corporation and not by you personally. So if you act as a sole proprietor, then people can come after your personal assets, your house, your car, your retirement, everything. So it makes sense to form a corporation or an LLC. Uh, so that's just the basic first step in the process. You also need to typically prepare what are called bylaws. And these kind of set out how the company is run. Uh, in some cases, you'll want a stockholders agreement, which is an agreement among the owners that says if there's three owners and one of them doesn't want to be involved in the business. What happens? It's preparing for a business divorce ahead of time, like a prenup and saying, okay, well, here's how someone would be bought out or what would happen with their shares. Highly recommended, even if you think that nothing could ever go wrong because it does. I see it all the time. Um, so highly recommend that. You also want minutes of meetings where you initially set up the board of directors who are the people who make decisions for the company on a high level. Then they elect what are called officers, like your CEO, president, chief financial officer, underneath them that run the business day to day, that are given authority to run the business. Um, so you want minutes of meetings to show or resolutions to show that these people were actually elected and things like, okay, we authorized issuing stock to these three different owners, or we authorize the formation of a bank account. Uh, you also want to obtain an employer ID number, and you can do that through the IRS, irs.gov. They have a process to obtain an employer identification number online. So these are some of the initial steps just to get the basics set up for your business as a corporation 
But again, there's a lot of steps along the way that if you do not follow them, this won't make any difference if you get sued, if you form a corporation, but you don't follow all the steps, maintain formalities, uh, keep your corporation up to date with regular filings with the Secretary of State, for example, uh, the corporate you know, liability veil that protects your personal assets is gonna go away. So you have to make sure it's formed properly, operated properly, and maintained properly at, at all times. So this is good to review with an attorney or someone who has knowledge that can help you out in that area. So this is sort of the initial steps to form your corporation uh, and you know, good luck and uh, you're on your way to your future growth of your business.